Hi, Roger Magulis here with Edward Jazerski from Microsoft. Welcome. Thank you. And we're going to cover a topic I think I, I'm really looking forward to the conversation around reinforcement mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can explain like, like what it is and why is it gaining such an important role these days in the AI community. Mm -hmm. Well, so reinforcement learning is a type of AI techniques you use when you have to learn how to make decisions to get to an outcome. Right, it's very different than um, trying to learn uh, to detect uh, something in an image or trying to find something in a data set or in text because it is about making decisions. Do you go this way or this way? Do you choose this? Do you choose that? And that entails a whole set of concepts that are about exploring uh, the unknown. You have the notion of exploring uh, versus exploiting, which is do the tried and true versus try something new. You bring in high-level concepts like the notion of curiosity, like how much should you bias to try new things, the notion of creativity, how crazy are the things that you're willing to try out. Um, and um, reinforcement learning is a science that studies how these things come together in a learning system. So since it's a little different mm -hmm. than like the mainstream AI, uh, mm -hmm. Where can organizations apply this, and does Microsoft even yeah. apply this kind of stuff? Yeah, so we, we've been using it for <laughs> many years in ma across the different places. So if you think of it as a type of AI that helps you make the right decision at the right time, it's the sort of thing that can help you basically learn or discover the business rules that you use in your applications to achieve something, right? Um, so we've been using it in many places. One example um, is Xbox homepage. Every time somebody opens their console, uh, they get shown with different things they can do. And it turns out there's a lot of good machine learning people that can say, if you were to watch a movie, I'd know exactly which movie you'd probably like or which game you'd probably play. But what's really, really hard to guess is, what are you coming to the console for? Are you coming just to watch a stream and sit back, to watch a movie, to join a game casually with your friends, to get another achievement and like try to you know, <laughs> complete that sort of uh, result? And um, it's very tricky to kind of guess that. And it's very contextual and it's very personal. So we've been applying it there uh, to uh, essentially, based on real time context that we know about that user, suggest the right th type of activity. And we've gotten like 40% increase in engagement with that, on top of all the work that the machine learning scientists were already doing. Mm -hmm. Or we use it in MSN News when you're trying to stay on top of a changing, unsimulatable, very dynamic world. And uh, you know your AI algorithms are learning from the last 15 minutes and republishing themselves automatically every five. So if you think of content personalization or personalization in general, it is a choice where I think I can make you happy or uh, we can have a better transaction if I show A or B or C or D. Let's use AI to discover the rule in each context that will tell me which one to use. And how do I tell it whether it worked or not? Well, all I need to do is transform the sort of result we were seeking for into a reward score that then is a minimalist way of telling the AI good or bad and it'll just keep learning from that. Great. And so what challenges do organizations face because it's a little different than regular AI mm -hmm. in implementing RL? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest challenges first is to understanding where it is um, acceptable. We've seen a lot of great advancements in AI and uh, driven by RL. Um, you know, all the video games are won, like StarCraft and Go, and like, you know, what we're doing with self-driving cars. I mean, there's a lot of industry attention going to that space. And a lot of these problems get solved in simulation. So um, what one of the big challenges that uh, brings in of itself a whole family of things that needs to be resolved to uh, make it work in the real world is to have it operate, not in a simulation, but in the physical, tangible, real-time world that you and I exist in. Mm -hmm. um, so that means, for example, uh, being able to have algorithms that can learn without retries or without saying, well, what if we tried this instead of that? Or um, designing the algorithm so that when they are exploring, they treat that one interaction they have with that user as a very valuable and scarce and hard-won data point instead of saying, oh, put another quarter in the cloud and get another billion data points of simulated data, right? So the algorithms and the systems have to adapt themselves to interact with this reality and treat it as a more scarce source of information from which more learning has to be harvested. And then, of course, the systems have to be fast because <laughs> a lot right. of transactions have to be managed every second. Mm -hmm. um, another area where my, uh, Microsoft is helping with reinforcement learning is in the area of autonomous systems. And there we do use 
simulations to train, for example, robotic controllers that are adaptive and things like that. And once the model is uh, trained in simulation, it gets transferred over to physical robots that then can use all the learnings of all the corner cases that simulation expose them to in the real world. So since you guys have done mm -hmm. some RL, mm -hmm. what kind of empirical things have you learned about the challenges that RL poses? Yeah, well, so I, I would say that one of the biggest uh, challenges is surprisingly that implementing RL these days is a lot about user experience and design and understanding what you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, when you have an algorithm that actually asks you, I will achieve a goal, but you have to tell me exactly how we're doing against that goal, how many times that trips up the business conversation, right? Like, because are you really pursuing the click? Aren't you pursuing something else, something a bit deeper, right? And deeper could mean like watch a few seconds of the video, but is that really? And how far away from the click do you want to, can you get before the signal gets too noisy? So one of the, um, one of the challenges is really to have an honest conversation about goals and measurability of them. Mm -hmm. um, then um, it comes uh, to actually seeing your problem through the light of RL. This is why we're really focused first on doing applied use services because it, it can be very abstract otherwise. It's like, oh, I gotta make decisions, I get rewards, and I'm gonna explore, and how do I look at my own business problem through that light? And a lot of people get tripped up in that. So what you try to say, look, we're gonna draw a smaller box. We're gonna say, we're gonna define personalization using RL as choose the right thing from a menu in a context and tell us how well it went. And that's not the universe of possibility, but 90% of their people can frame a part of the problem that way. So if we can design a small box where people in it can have guaranteed results, and we can tell you whether you fit in the box or not, um, is a great way to get people started with RL. Right. Yeah. So how does Microsoft help other companies work with RL? Well, there, there's, there's many things. I mean, first of all, we ship products, right? And uh, I think one of the nice things about the whole reinforcement learning ecosystem is that we have many groups at Microsoft working in RL, and all of them are mixing advanced research with applied use. Um, so I'm going to go into your question in a second, but one example is uh, we have a gaming division where it, uh, they're using RL to train agents to play with you or against you, but not to win. It's like they're, they're actually rewarded on how much fun you're having, right? So um, how can we have like a soccer co-player or a race car you're racing against race in such a way that maximizes your fun? Right, and that is like the sort of work that um, game studios can use when they're building their, you know, playing agents. Then we also ship enterprise products, you know, Azure services that people can just call and uh, invoke, and you know, make it easy for every developer to call. I mean, if you want to forget for a second about the AI glamour, you know, this service um, that we're talking about in particular is Personalizer, is an, a glorified sort by results. You know, you could sort a list alphabetically. You could search, <laughs> sort a <laughs> list by date. You could sort by results. And as long as you tell it the results that it got with that sort, it can keep learning. And so we've made it really easy for developers to just send an array of options and some JSON objects and send us a number and, and train the model. And we take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I think, which is an underlying how of what we do all this, is that we know that we are exploring new areas of where what does it mean to have an AI that is like learning my business rules? What does it mean in terms of like business accountability? What does it mean in terms of like safety if you're talking about physical systems, right? Uh, what sort of controls and monitors from the business, from the machine learning side does this need to have? So one way we are producing results that everybody will be able to benefit from is that we're really taking an emphasis on co-creation of the product with customers. So we're basically getting together on the ki in the kitchen, working on the same side of the table, and uh, really testing out the concepts um, before putting out a product and or before even putting out toolkits saying, do things. We say, no, like, you know what? We actually p walk the talk. We actually run millions of dollars of worth of revenue on this personalization engine we are now sharing with you. Mm -hmm. So having that proven practice while innovating with customers is an important how, I guess, of the process. Great. So one of the things, does RL bring up any new ethical fairness bias issues, or is yeah. it the same ones that we all face? No, it's huge. And actually, the Applied Reinforcement Learning product line is the first product line at Microsoft that has it as a ship criteria to have responsible use and ethical guidelines as part of product docs. So right next to the API and the open and closing brackets of the JSON, there's like responsible use. 
And responsible use guidelines, the way we see them, are the sort of thing that can help those unaware of the consequences of what they're doing become more aware and help those that are aware of the consequences and have good intentionality have more backing and we're giving them materials to become stronger leaders. We, we believe like individual voices count. So we're trying to find those individuals that are willing to push the status quo. And uh, in reinforcement learning, you get very specific questions about uh, ethics and of course in personalization too. Um, some of these things are like, where is it reasonable to apply reinforcement learning? Is it, um, where is it consequential to explore exploit? Um, should uh, um, insurance policies be personalized in a web page using reinforcement learning? Um, and what are the attributes that should drive that? Or is an algorithm trying to find out better ways that is not goaled towards the purpose of insurance, which is long-term, you know, financial right. <laughs> pool of risk and, so and social safety net? Is it even ethical to apply to that sort of scenario? So we have a guideline that says, has discussions about when and what sort of use cases to apply to. Uh, it has discussions about how reward systems could gain results for you and you know, that you will get what you ask for. And we're not very good at asking for the right things in general. So uh, <laughs> we're trying to like nudge folks into asking themselves the right questions. What features are you willing to give to this AI about the ambient and about the choices such that it can make the good results? And then things about how to, for example, in the area of personalization, how to um, improve the level of dignity by which people's data is being used to train AI. So like, hey, how can you make your business results improvement be something that actually goes back to the people that contributed the interactions that you learned from? Mm -hmm. So and we, that, that guideline is there and it gets um, reviewed uh, both by customers, our field team, and um, our ether committee at Microsoft. And, um, and then it even starts before with the culture of the team. We try to make it a non-taboo topic to discuss these things. We have a diverse team where people with different viewpoints can share what they think. And um, you know, anybody can pull the and on cord, you know, the good old thing that stops the factory. And if you have an ethical or responsible use concern, you can stop the process. And it's up to everybody else to justify why it should restart. It's not up to you to justify why you stopped it. So we take it very seriously. Uh, because the, in the real world, these decisions will have consequences. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Well, thanks for such a complete covering of uh, clearly a growing topic in the mm -hmm. AI space. And thanks yeah. for your time. No, thank you. Yeah.